we will call the CPA meeting um, uh, to order at 6.03 p.m. Uh, this is the 30th, is that correct? Yes. Okay, thank you for reminding me of that. Um, so uh, we have everybody here but one member and he may chime in at some point. Um, our agenda um, is fairly full. We may not get to everything, but we'll do the best we can. We do, before we start, someone needs to volunteer to take the minutes. Is there anyone who would like to jump at that opportunity? Uh, I believe the last minutes were done by Sam. Is that correct? Yes, uh, Robin is presenting tonight, so I'm not sure she's the best person to take the notes. To I'm take making a statement, but and I, yeah. But yeah, I would prefer not to take the notes if I can. Okay. I've done it at least twice this, this <laughs> fiscal year. <laughs> Me too, two or three times. Well, we can't I, all right, I'll do it. I Okay, fine. Um, it's a little complicated since I'm trying to keep you on the screen and somehow take minutes. Note, so just hang on a second while I get organized. Uh, I don't know if I can move you over. I mean, I, I can do it. If we don't have a, uh, someone else will need to keep an eye on attendees and things, but I could do it. Hey, Karen, oh, keep an eye on what was that, Anthony? Attendees and if there's any public questions or anything, but that's a limited period. I could. It'd be wonderful if you did it. So, Anthony, when when the public wants to participate, do we get a notice and have to let them in, or are they, do they just enter on their own? Um, no, the, the public is viewing us right now. They can raise their, they, there's a q and I believe they also have the ability to raise their hands. Okay. And can you see them? Yeah. We should all be able to see them if we, uh, yep, there's Flo, there's Fletcher in the public. Let's make him a panelist. And how do I see, I don't, think we I, see, see them. I don't see anybody else. How do I? There should be a participants button down at the bottom. Participants, Q&A, polls. Is oh, that yeah. only for the co-hosts? It might only be for the co-hosts. Yeah, I don't see. The I don't see. For everybody. I saw it. I can click on it. Okay. Scroll okay. down, Sarah. You might see it. And well, then, I, you, then you have panelists or attendees to, to choose from. Oh, I see. But, okay. Now, I can't see them, Anthony, to see if they're raising their hand to ask a question. Okay. Well, see, I mean... It's, it's, up to, it's, up to, it's up to you, I guess. If you want me to take the minutes, I can. I have a second screen, so. Well, Nate, I think you'll see them if they want to raise their hand. I think you'll see a hand pop up in the attendees list. All I see is a list. I don't see. Yeah, uh, but nobody wants to raise their hand at the moment. There's there's a Q and A, and I do see one question in there, so I'm sure there will be. Uh, okay. Nothing. Well, All right. When we get the public comment, we'll figure out how to make it work. How's that sound? If you'd like me to monitor the attendee raised hands, I can do that if Anthony's doing minutes. I can just alert you, Nate, if someone okay. raises their hand. Okay, that'd be great. Thank you, Paul. Okay. Um, thank you, Anthony. Thanks. All right. So, uh, yeah, thank you, Anthony, for, for doing that. I appreciate that. Um, so, uh, the minutes of uh, May 5th, I, these were done by Sam. I assume everyone's had a chance to see them, hopefully. That's Whether, March 5th. Mar I'm sorry, March 5th. Um, were there any concerns or corrections to those minutes? I had a, a note on uh, my comment on the second page. It says the Historical Commission, comment Robin F, the Historical Commission prefers that as much as the award as possible will go towards systems. Not quite sure exactly what I said, but the intent of the historical commission was that funding be limited to preservation systems. That was the intent of the statement from the historical commission. Okay, Sam, do you have the notes in front? Of the I have them. I'm looking for them as we speak. Okay. Uh, I don't have them as a document on my desktop, although my guess is we could 
<coughs> agree to make whatever changes are referenced and then submit the edited version thereafter in compliance with those edits. Okay. So I'm looking for them. I know the section she's referring to, uh, but I don't have them immediately in front of me. Diana? The only thing I noticed was that I think it was first names all the way through, and I was wondering if we wanted to develop a consistent thing of using the last names, but I otherwise thought they were fine. Okay. Well, we have two Sarahs on the committee, so that's, that, that, that's an, an important suggestion to make sure there's no uh, mixing up. And well, for the, and for the historical record, initials are used. Last name initials. That's they're not confusing. No, oh, I I know, but I just wondered if we wanted to consistently use last names. But it's it's okay with me either way. Okay. Any other concerns about the minutes? Do we have a motion to approve the minutes? I so move. Is there a second? A second. All in favor, please raise your hand. Aye. Uh, opposed? Abstain. Looks like it's unanimous. Can we get Sarah's, Sarah Isinger's vote? Yeah, I, I, I said yes. I oh, said yes. Okay. Right. Yep. Um, now we have the financials. Anthony, is that you or is that Sonia? You're on mute, Anthony, You're muted, as is Sonia and Sarah E. I don't think we have any, uh, we always, we have financial updates always on there. I don't think we have anything new to share on that. It's changed since we last met, correct? Don't believe so. You're so in, in terms of In terms of available funding, I don't believe so. Sonia, anything about the financials that no, just- No, I have no updates. I wasn't prepared to update on that. Okay, I don't think anything's changed, so it's yeah. probably not. Um, okay. uh, so public comment, um, let me just, before we go into public comment, if I could just ask that, um, for, and we're really happy that you're here to participate in this meeting. Um, we ask that you be succinct um, and that you not repeat what may have been said by a person prior to you. Um, we're really interested in hearing your input, but we, we do want to make sure that we are crisply efficient in making sure everyone is heard, every viewpoint is able to be expressed um, without repetition. So if you could just be succinct and um, make sure that your thoughts are, are somewhat original based on who you may have heard before. So <clears throat> someone else will have to Paul, is this the thing? Do you see anybody? Yes, who's I do. Uh, Janet McGowan has her hand up. Should I allow her to talk? Please, Janet. Right now. Janet, can you hear us? Yes, I can. I was muted. Oh, okay. Um, so thank you um, for for all your work. Um, I just wanted to make a comment about um, just a suggestion for the for CPAC. Um, I'm an attorney. I'm a mediator. I'm recent, most recently a planning group member. And I've been a volunteer in many communities. Um, so I would, my suggestion for you, you know, it seems like you have a legal issue here that is not quite resolved. And so my suggestion to CPAC is just basically take the time to sort it out. And um, it's important, you know, to figure out what's going on and then to get it right. And it seems like talking to the DOR made sense on the topic that deals with Community Preservation Act committees and then talking to KP Law, it makes sense that all these people should talk together, that you know, maybe CPAC members can talk to the Department of Revenue and the town attorney in a Zoom call so you can have a time to ask questions. Legal stuff isn't as complicated as people make it out to be. And um, you know, the jargon can always be kind of like turned into English with, in, with stuff. And it would give CPAC members time to ask questions. Um, I just recently learned that the, um, the, the, the head of the library has asked for a one year delay and I think that actually buys a little time to, to make sure you get the um, things you need. Um, if it's a one year delay it doesn't sound like the money needs to be allocated now. I don't really know how CPAC works so you know my feeling was that the money can go to other needs and we get the request next year and consider it. 
um, with more information. In any event, um, I just, and I'm sure you guys don't want to violate the law or get into a dispute or a legal problem. Um, I've done enough litigation to realize that there really is no winner in litigation. It's just a terrible process. And that as a mediator, it's there, you know, everybody has a common goal and I, you know, which is to help the town and to make sure this money is spent properly. So I just encourage you to do the right thing, take the time, talk directly to the Department of Revenue, um, ask questions, have KP Law come in and just, um, you know, sort out the problem, you know, and, and I don't, I'm not offering a legal opinion, I'm really talking more about process. And I do want to thank you for all the work that you do, because I know that these committees take a huge amount of time and, it, it, and it's obviously, you've done great work for the community, because I, I, I walk on the trails and I use the pool and I have all those, those facilities and it's, you know, the work you're doing is very important and I appreciate the time that you've taken and the, the time you're taking on this issue. So I just wanted to thank you for that. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Yeah, Matthew Blumenfeld has his hand raised. Lots of talk. Okay, Matthew. Matthew, you're up. Good evening. Can you hear me? I can. Yes. Fantastic, thank you. Uh, I'd also like to thank you, uh, CPAC, for your careful consideration of the Jones proposal and uh, for this opportunity to come uh, before you once again to advocate for the project. Um, I think that you have all the information you need to proceed with recommending the Jones project to the town council and the opinions of town attorney and the supporting memoranda from the historical commission and others complete the case. I'd say the debate around the project is good and demonstrates the dedication and care of our CPA committee. Uh, particularly when considering projects that are going to have a long lasting impact on our community. I would just like to offer one point of clarification. As you may recall, at the last in person meeting held some months ago, when the Jones presented its updated building program, uh, that it placed the historical archives within the footprint of the his existing historic 1928 library building. That was a change from the original plan submitted to MBLC. And the new plans were under development at the time of the library's original submission to CPAC. Nonetheless, the new plans demonstrate conclusively that CPA funds will be used within an historic structure to make the lower level suitable to hold the archives safely and, security, and securely. I think it's important, uh, an important factor in this project's favor that CPA dollars can be used here to both help restore an iconic structure in the heart of our town and to create conditions suitable for the long-term preservation of our archives and other articles of historic importance within the structure. Thanks, and I hope you'll re recommend this project to the town council for funding without further delay. Thank you. Next. I see no other hands raised at this moment. Okay. So that will conclude public comment. Um, so, because this is kind of a complicated issue, I think there's, we want to sort of really make this discussion as efficient as possible. And, and Robin and I have had a conversation about this, partly because um, I represent one side of this discussion, Robin represents another, and we've had a couple of good conversations about how to go at this. Um, Robin is going to present, um, I, Robin, correct me if I'm wrong, but a case, to um, vote against a motion to rescind the previous vote. That's uh, correct. And uh, then I will present my case. Then we will open it up to the committee, but we'll probably try to keep it somewhat structured in the sense that we'll talk about um, the issue of um, whether it meets the historical preservation designation, whether it is providing budget relief, and lastly, uh, if it's an appropriate proposal overall to recommend. Robin, is that? I think that's you, pretty accurate, yeah. Okay. Just okay. trying to keep those categories contained. Okay. Um, Robin, the floor is yours. Okay, so I just uh, I wrote up the statement, so I'm going to read it. Um, I'm hoping everybody had a chance to review the um, uh, memo that Sarah Eisinger and I submitted. 
Um, but just to summarize, uh, as a representative to the CPA committee from the Historical Commission, my first obligation here is to present the committee with the Historical Commission's recommendations regarding CPA historic preservation proposals. As I stated previously, the Historical Commission has recommended the Jones Library Special Collections proposal based on its importance, its necessity, and its appropriateness for CPA funding. Additionally, I conveyed at the earlier meeting the Commission's recommendation that the proposal be limited to $1 million in funding, bonded over a ten per period of 10 years, and that the funds be restricted to covering specific systems related to the preservation of historic artifacts and documents. I believe the specific language from the Historical Commission is in my memo to the committee. In my response to the minority opinion, I argued that the proposal should not be rejected on the basis of ineligibility under the CPA rubric for historical preservation. The purpose is to preserve artifacts and documents and does not fall under the category of create. The CP coalition guidelines via their website promote the funding of preservation systems as recommended. Uh, CPA funds have been used for similar projects in the past, including at the Jones Library. The CPA guidelines via the website direct communities to seek guidance from municipal council when there is a question of appropriateness and eligibility, and the KP Law opinion affirmed the eligibility and appropriateness of the project. And Mr. Sagner's opinion contradicts some of the guidance provided by the CP Coalition via its website. Uh, I also uh, argued that the proposal should not be reject rejected on the basis of supplanting uh, and that the KP law affirmed that the project did not fit that definition. I'm not as well versed in that area. Um, and that my reading of the DOR guidance that was provided to the committee did not, in my opinion, preclude the project. Uh, I also suggested that requesting a revised proposal from the applicant, which aligns with the Historical Com uh, Commission's recommendations, could help eliminate some confusion around the proposal's central preservation aim and appropriateness. My commission to the committee still stands, and I hope that our discussion can uh, handle each area of contention separately for clarity and efficiency. Thank you. Well. Um, am I muted or not? You are not muted. Um, okay. So I, uh, I think Nate, just as a parliamentary, so you should, there should be a motion on the table that's made and seconded okay. and then the conversation just so we're doing everything according to Hoyle. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Robin. <clears throat> um, I'll, I'll make the motion. Uh, I move that we, um, vote to rescind recommending the Jones library project. I'll second it. The motion is seconded. Is the, is the recommendation to rescind, recommending it or to rescind the vote? Okay, so um, the, the town has sort of declared our original straw poll vote is an official vote. That's not the way we've operated. I disagree with that. I'm sorry, Nate, I gotta stop you because there was some background noise, sounded like somebody walking. I'm sorry, can you start over? I, I just muted Sarah E. Uh, I think Thank that was you. my from her line. She can unmute yeah. if she needs. <laughs> okay, so um, we, th the town has made the decision to declare our original straw poll vote the official vote. I disagree with that. I think that's a departure from past practice. Um, that vote is to put items onto a board for approval. Then when we get to the point where we evaluate the whole slate to determine if we have enough money, we vote on that slate and send it to town council who can do anything they want with any individual item. So, you know, I, I protest that declaration of the town, but that's, that's where we are. We have, according to the town, we have already voted to approve the Jones project for CPA funding. My motion is to rescind that vote. So if you vote for this, you are voting to not send the Jones proposal to town council as approved. If you vote against this proposal, you're voting to honor the original vote according to the town and, and to send it to town council as recommended. 
I'll go over that again before we vote. But 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 that's I think where we are. And it's that, it's unknown what would occur post vote were it not to be were it to be rescinded. The question would then be then what? Correct. Uh, I don't know. That's an interesting parliamentary question, Paul. Do you have a response to that to help us out? I, d I don't know if I understand the question. So if we vote to rescind, do we then have to have a secondary vote to make a decision or is a vote to rescind a vote to reject? Is that what you're asking, Sam? Uh, I'm making an observation that if the vote is to rescind, what that does in my understanding would be to negate the initial vote. Right. Therefore we go instead of plus one or negative one, we're at null. <laughs> we're at a no decision if we vote to rescind, which would then leave the potential for whatever the committee decides. That's how I would interpret your motion. If yeah, yeah. I, it's it, the vote to rescind would take away the action that you took previously. Correct. Okay. <clears throat> so then I, the question would be, do we have to have another vote or do we just not send this based on that vote, send it to town council? You could take another vote. You could just take no action. Okay. All right. Nate. Uh, yes. For example, there could be there could be a motion to fund specific parts of the proposal or to fund a different amount. It's just that the specific you know plan that we had would be negated, but there could be other other okay. suggestions. Okay. So before I start, I just want to say, uh, yes, Anthony. So I just uh, wanted to circle back to something Nate said, which is that we are that the town is considering the straw poll vote to be the vote. So we had a straw poll where you ranked your, your preferences one to five, but then we had a vote. And last year you had a final vote to recommend the whole thing as kind of just putting it all together, but that wasn't the vote that was reported to the council. We, we reported I, we, it wasn't the slate vote that we reported to the council because that would have been the same for everything. We reported the actual vote and the and the objection. So I just want to clarify: it's not the straw poll that we're taking. You you guys took a vote on each project to recommend them, and and just slate or no, there are individual votes for each project. Right, but but our past practice has been that that vote gets a project put onto a board, and then we have a formal vote at the end of that. That's what we've done in the past. Okay. Well, whatever we can, we can talk about that. So before we, before I start my um, making the case for why I think we should rescind this, a couple things I just want to get on the table. Um, I think I know there's this sense out there that um, there is a sort of movement of people who are opposed to the Jones Library's plan. And a lot of those folks who are publicly identified with being opposed to the Jones's plan have written in, in, in opposition to the CPA proposal. And in a, I, I get emails from Amherst Forward, their blanket emails, and there was an email that came to me that said something to the effect of, you know, the usual suspects are at it again and they're trying to defeat the library, so they want to come out and defeat the CPA proposal as well. And I wrote back to them and told them that that was a mischaracterization of what was going on. Um, not that it's particularly relevant, but while I think maybe the opposition to this proposal originated from me, I find the vision of what the Jones people have come up with for this library pretty thrilling. Uh, I really think it's an exciting proposal, and I hope we can find the money to do it because I think what the Jones people have been talking about is a building that could be a transformational public facility. I personally, as a citizen, find it very exciting. And I hope we can do it. So my opposition to this has nothing to do with any negative opinion about what the Jones people have come up with. Secondly, when I presented the cash proposals to uh, the Community Resources Committee, into the finance committee, and they're very non-controversial proposals. Even though we weren't talking about the Jones, uh, that came up in, in the discussion, and there was um, 
there was a mention by someone in town council of, you know, people have, some people on the CPA have gone rogue. And to his credit, he retracted that almost immediately. But it really made me think a little bit about how the, the minority report is being perceived in some quarters. Um, and I, I think it's really important to say that the minority report was written um, in, in, to some extent out of exasperation. Um, when we had the original straw poll vote, some questions came up that it would be this committee's due diligence to discuss and to research. And that's what we did. And as that process carried on of asking questions and reaching out to third parties and trying to have discussions among ourselves, um, there was some pretty significant resistance from people in town council and in town hall um, to the natural process of us doing what we should be doing, which is to properly vet proposals. So uh, I, th I, 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 I really want to make it clear that this is not a kind of rogue operation trying to stop some proposal in its tracks. We're simply doing what we should be doing, which is to ask questions of proposals. And regardless of how this vote goes, um, I think we're doing what we're supposed to be doing. And lastly, you know, I, I, I am a little critical, I think, of how the town has responded to, to this. Um, but I, I want to make clear that even though I am critical of some of the actions of the town, uh, I think everybody involved here is acting in what they think are the best interests of Amherst. I think everybody here has total integrity. I'm very thankful that I live in a town that's this well managed, excellent town manager, superb people working in town hall, a really good town council. None of this changes that, although I am a little critical of, of some of the things that have taken place, but I want that to, to be on the record. Um, so we're, we've talked a lot in this kind of brouhaha over this proposal about two things really, which is one is, does this really qualify as historic preservation? And is it budget supplanting? Now the, the issue of uh, is this really legitimately defined as historic preservation? You know, we've got, I think, an irreconcilable difference with this. I think KP law has an opinion. I think the coalition has an opinion. I think both need to be respected. Um, to, to some extent, I think that's much less important than the bigger issue, which is the issue of whether this proposal is a way for the town to get relief in their budget for a really complex set of capital projects, one of which is the Jones Library. And at the more I've been thinking about this, and that's been thinking about it way too much, um, that's really what I think is happening. And that, that for a couple of reasons that I'll go into, I'm very concerned about that. Um, so in 2017, I believe, the, uh, the Jones went to the um, State Library Commission and presented this grant, which is a um, grant proposal for this new envisioned Jones Library. And in that proposal were a list of a handful of really critical needs one of which was special collections. And the language used in that grant application was not all that different from what we saw in the CPA proposal. That grant proposal was approved. They got the grant. So, and that, that proposal was, what was approved was the plan that was sent to them by the Jones. They really liked it and they approved it. So, so coming into this, we already know that if the Jones is built, this new Jones, whether or not CPA participates in it, special collections is going to get what they need because that's part of the grant. Um, so the question then comes up is, you know, how important is CPA in making this special collections facility realized? And, um, 
it's kind of a weird history to this thing if you think about it, because when when this first came to us, it was the Jones um, presenting this as a part of their six percent of the of the town's costs that the town told them they had to raise. One of the questions that came up to them was will this $1 million grant be accounted for as that private fundraising that the town has told you you have to do? And the answer was, that's our assumption. Some eyebrows went up in the room. From what I understand, the finance office in town hall has decided that that's not gonna be the case, that that will not be counted as part of that $6 million. Someone can correct me if I'm wrong on that. So, so now we have a situation where essentially um, the town is is asking us for this one million dollars um, for a proposal that has already been accepted in the form of another grant two years ago. So we already know this thing is going to happen one way or another if the library is going to get built. The CPA grant is not going to change that. If we turn this grant down and the Jones gets built, there's still special collections is going to get what they want. That is a really dramatic departure from any other CPA proposal we've ever seen. Um, and um, if, if, if you look at CPA, CPA proposals that we've done uh, in the past, big and small, there's nothing that resembles this proposal. If you look at, at, at just looking a couple days ago, uh, Rolling Green, we funded 100%. The Plum Brook Fields, we funded 100%. Northampton Road, we're one of a handful of major funders. Uh, the Angel of the Lily Stained Glass Window, we were 100%. Hawthorne Property, we were 100%. Epstein Property, we pitched in 113. There was a land grant of 195. You can go on and on. The Dog Park, Groff Park, we paid a million dollars for Groff Park after we didn't get a park grant originally. In every one of those proposals, two things have happened that are not happening in this proposal. One is we were a major, significant, if not the complete, funder of that project. And secondly, had we decided not to participate in those, those projects would not have happened. They would have had to go right back to the drawing board. In this proposal, the million dollars that's being asked of CPA, which is more than what we generally have to spend in an entire budget year, is covering 3% of the cost of this building. And I don't think you can separate this ask from the cost of the building. Um, you know, if, if, if you sort of look at the, at the structure of this, uh, it's really similar to what Amherst College might do, uh, you know, if they want to build a new science building, they say, we're going to build a $100 million science building. Um, we're going to go out, we're going to get a couple of major gifts. And then as the wheels are turning and hiring the designer, hiring the architect, hiring the builder, then you go to the small donors and you go to someone and you say, we would like a million dollars for this science building and we're, we will name the physics lab after your family. And if that person turns them down, they just go to the next donor. It doesn't have an impact on whether that science building gets built, but it helps the college with its budget. That's the exact same structure that we're seeing here. And I think you can, you can look at the Jones as I do and say, this is really an exciting proposal. And you can look at the degraded facilities that Special Collections has and say, these people really need something fundamentally better and still say, this is not a proper use of CPA money. And that's where I am with this now. Um, and and um, so there's a couple of things. Um, we've never seen a CPA proposal like this. Um, I, I think what's really happening here is that, and this is something that, that I think the people who wrote the CPA feared that the town is in a very tough situation with funding these four huge capital projects. And I don't envy them. I have a lot of empathy for what they're trying to do, trying to make this work. Sitting in the corner is this bright, shiny object, which is the CPA. It's got a million dollars in cash. 
It's got millions of dollars of borrowing authority. And they're down to trying to find out the la find the last few million dollars to make this work. And, and they're sort of reverse engineering a historical preservation project in order to fill in a budget gap with a million dollars, which by a certain definition meets historical preservation. Um, it seems reasonable. But if you step away from this argument about the definition of historical preservation, that's what I'm seeing. Um, and to me, um, we have to look at it in that broader sense. Um, and this is not just sort of an academic argument about, you know, are we going to be prudes about the rules and regulations of the CPA? I mean, I think we should honor the rules and the regulations of the CPA. But, but here's what I think is the real damage that this does. First of all, um, if, we, if, if the Jones gets this money, this million dollars, and it's bonded over five years, Every year for five years, $200,000 will be taken out of the CPA budget to pay for the Jones at a time when uh, the already dire affordable housing crisis in Amherst is about to get a lot worse because we don't know what the result of this pandemic on people not being able to meet mortgages, on people being evicted, um, we're entering into some really unfamiliar territory with affordable housing. It's going to come out of that. We know the town is going to come to CPA next year for the fields project for uh, the fields at the, at the high school and the middle school. That's going to be a big ask. Um, we are going to drain the CPA budget of 20 to 25% of its entire coffer in order to pay for this, I think, contribution to a capital project. And that's a really terrible financial decision for the CPA. It's also, ironically, really going to hurt historic preservation. Because for the next five years, the minute we start conferring, we've already spent 200000 on historic preservation. And some of the most exciting projects that we've done in the time I've been on CPA are these kind of somewhat micro projects, 50000 40000 100,000. Um, and when we've already spent 200,000 on historic preservation, and we've got these incredible needs for, we know for recreation and affordable housing, how much money is going to be left? Um, historic preservation takes a big hit in this proposal, ironically. And there's a, the other issue is one that I think we, we, I never really thought much about until this came up, but it strikes me that it's something that we really need to think about. Um, the CPA is kind of a remarkable thing in some ways because it's, it's a voluntary self-tax. In whenever it was 1999 or 2000, I, way before I got here, when the town voted for the CPA for the first time, um, it involved a kind of compact between taxpayers and, um, and the town. And that compact was, you know, my roads are bad and there's a leak in the elementary school roof and I go to the park on Saturday morning and the grass is five inches high, but we will voluntarily let you take 3% on top of our property taxes to fund tightly defined focused projects in four very specific areas. But we better not catch you paying your bills with this money. And that is what the original drafters of this legislation feared towns would do with CPAs, that they would use it to kind of plug holes when they had budget problems. Understandably, it's sitting there. That's the reason why part of the legislation is if you adopt a CPA, you have to organize a citizen committee, which is what we are, to vet these proposals to make sure that that temptation is not at play in any of these proposals. Now, that sounds like it's kind of adversarial, but it's not really. This committee in the time I've been on it has been extremely collaborative 
with the town. We have been uh, very much working in sync with town priorities, I think especially in open space and in recreation where those proposals tend to come from the town. We have worked very closely with Barb Bills and Dave Zomek um, to make sure we get those programs off the ground. So um, I think it's, it's dangerous in a time when we have very high taxes, we have a kind of imploding economy, we just saw what happened with the sewer rates, to enter into a territory where decisions we make can really be questioned by taxpayers. And what I fear is, well, first of all, I think the CPA is one of the most amazing things we have at our disposal as, as, as a town. We get to fund things that funding is always hard to find for. Um, um, and, and to put that in danger to me uh, is really something that we need to think very seriously about. You know, if there's ever any kind of tax revolt in Amherst, then people say, I've had enough. Um, why am I paying this extra 3% when my roads don't get fixed and the grass doesn't get mowed in the parks? If there's ever any kind of tax revolt like that, CPA is the first thing that's going to go because it's low hanging fruit. And when, if the CPA ever goes away, this, is going to, this kind of discussion is going to be the good old days because trying to find money for projects in recreation and open space and historic preservation, affordable housing, it's going to be a completely different situation. So when I see this framed as a good faith, but a flawed attempt by the town to help plug in the holes in the last stages of funding the Jones library, I really fear that that's how it's going to be interpreted. Um, I think the Jones proposal in itself is, is kind of a no-brainer. Of course we want a better Jones. Of course we want uh, a, a special collections facility that's right. But I don't think this is the right way to do it at all. And I think there's a fairly simple solution to this. The, the, you know, the MBLC, I'm rounding off here, they're contributing 14 million. The town has to contribute 22. They've told the Jones, the Jones has to pitch in six of that 22. That leaves the town with a $16 million dilemma. How do we come up with that $16? $16 million. Um, I guess their answer to that is we'll contribute 15 and we'll draw a million, a full year's budget from the CPA. I think the simple solution is to just have the town borrow the 16 million and leave the CPA alone. Um, this proposal is not gonna live or die on whether this grant is approved or not approved. It makes it easier for the town if it's approved, absolutely. But we really need to be upfront and honest about the budgeting with this thing. If we want a new library, and I do, we need to pay for it the right way. And we shouldn't be engaged in what I think is bordering on an accounting trick to drain CPA of an enormous amount of money to help pay for this project. So I recommend that you vote for rescinding this uh, proposal. So can we go to the committee now? So maybe we start with the issue of whether this qualifies as historic preservation. Is there anybody who'd like to speak to that, Diana? Well, I do not have um, eloquently prepared remarks as Nate has given you. I think I agree with everything he said. What originally caught my eye and stuck in my craw is that this is creating or was creating a wing, a new wing to be added to the Jones Library. I now know that we're talking about ex the building being within the existing footprint. What is not totally clear to me is whether that involves building outside walls. I think that this proposal could be delayed if the whole um, project is going to be delayed and could be brought back in a way that would assuage uh, my concerns. I'm very worried about doing what I originally had in mind, which was creating a new wing. 
I have no problem with fire suppression, with HVAC, with containers that would guard our, our um, important documents in ways that they should be preserved. None of that is a problem with me. Um, but the idea that this would be a new wing somehow is what originally stuck in my craw. Um, I am also very concerned about the precedent we would be starting by going against what the Community Preservation Act Coalition has written. I think that, for example, Hadley uh, had a revision to their Goodwin Library, uh, a, an amount of money they were asking their CPA for, which was about, let's, I'm gonna round them off roughly, say 280,000. And they did not approve all of it. They pulled back about 60,000 because they felt they were violating the intent of the CPA um, coalition, what the CPA coalition wanted. I think it would be a rotten, absolutely rotten thing to do, um, to go against the coalition. And it means we would be setting a precedent. We could be sued. I don't know that we have a Larry Kelly around who would do that kind of thing now. But the fact of life is it could happen. And why not just delay this thing and let it go and let them come back with their proposal? That clearly is OK by everybody's um, agreement. And then CPA, uh, CPAC could be behind it. So at the moment, those are the things that occurred to me. Um, and maybe I'll add something later. Robin? Yeah, I just wanted to respond to that, that the purpose of the Historical Commission's recommendation was to get away from any ideas about a new wing, to limit um, the proposal to preservation systems is actually entirely in line with everything on the CPA, Co CPA Coalition website. And both um, KP Law and um, Stuart Sagner's opinion um, looked at the proposal as it stands. There was this unfortunate uh, a moment in, in between where the Historical Commission recommended that the proposal be amended in a way or restricted in a way to be more in alignment with appropriateness. And that is one of my suggestions that we ask uh, the Jones to submit a revised proposal in line with the Historical Commission recommendations so that we get away from all this discussion. So we don't have to have it anymore if we get something in front of us that doesn't include walls and doesn't include new wings and we can just talk about climate control and, and other sorts of systems that are just standard practice in historic preservation. Um, if, if, that, if that is helpful, I would uh, recommend it and I'd be willing to make a motion on that. Uh, Michael? You're Michael, muted. You're on mute. uh, I'm now unmuted, okay. Um, I, I agree entirely with what both Nate and Robin has, said, has been saying. Uh, and it seems to me that uh, we could uh, solve this problem at least momentarily by doing what the Historical Commission has suggested, requiring, rather than asking, requiring the library to come back with a specific proposal for specific items which relate to historic preservation, i.e. fire suppression, HVAC, uh, shelving, uh, proper material containing, uh, the, anything that, that is related to the specifics of historic preservation. Um, and I am very much in favor of, of that kind of uh, um, expenditure. Then we can decide whether that amount, whether it's 500,000, 800,000, 826,000, um, is a, an appropriate uh, expenditure for, for us to recommend to the town council. Uh, the fact that it started out as a 1.5 million request, a percentage of the total cost of the building, then was reduced to arbitrarily $1 million, which can't be anything less than just another arbitrary number, because nothing would add up to a million dollars even. Um, 
makes me very suspicious and made put me in the line of, of joining the minority. Um, it seems to me that we can get away from all of this by simply going to following what, this, what the Historical Commission is really suggesting, which is asking for a new proposal for the next funding cycle. Robin, Paul, I'll get to you. Just a very quick note. The, the million dollars uh, was an amount that was suggested the Historical Commission based, I would say, on Jane Wall's experience with preservation systems. So it wasn't entirely arbitrary. She felt that that was a figure that would easily be achieved in terms of, of having to pay for those systems. So I just wanted to clarify that. But it's an estimate. It's a blank check estimate. So the idea was that we would pay up to that point for historic preservation related items. Uh, we don't operate that way. You don't do blank checks in the CPAC, it seems to me. And I mean, I have very limited experience here, but we fund things that are specific. And when, it's, when it, an item is unspecific, we reject it as we rejected the North, Li North Amherst Library for being unspecific. It was asking for a certain amount of money, which would solve the problem, but we didn't know how. Same thing goes here. Okay, I, I, I mean, I would, just counter briefly that um, it's not a blank check in the sense that it would be up, up to that amount with the anticipation that this is an expectation of what those systems would cost in a project like this, which was a little different from the Norris Amherst Library where we had absolutely no in information whatsoever and nothing to base it on. And with that, I will drop further discussion. Thank you. Uh, Sarah E. Hi. Sarah. Can you hear? Yep. Can you hear me all? Yep. Yes. Um, I apologize. I'm not able to be on video and I um, have to get off the line at seven o'clock. So I'm very eager to have the vote. Um, so I wanted to say a few things. One is that um, I really appreciate the points that Nate has raised with us. It's a nuanced, in-depth, thoughtful uh, set of arguments which I really um, find persuading. On the other hand, I think the time for that, we did a set of investigations. We talked to the CPA co coalition who said, consult with an external attorney, a council, which the town did. And then we also got a very lengthy, we said we voted on it, and then we got a lengthy set of comments from our town manager that really asked us to um, support the integrity of our previous vote and laid out a whole set of arguments as to why it really wasn't our place to sort of question the public finance process. I'm just paraphrasing here. I think, and while I support people's personal and uh, support of the project, in the end, if you vote against this, it doesn't really matter. It's a little bit, if I may, may saying like, I supported the, the war in Iraq, but I didn't really, I voted for the war in Iraq, but I didn't really support it. It doesn't really matter in the end, it's the vote. And we voted. And I would say on the precedent, I have a couple of other points. On the precedent setting issue, I think that's immaterial. I think we should set a precedent uh, by supporting this project. It's the most important, uh, project, it's one of the most important uh, capital projects. It's the largest project uh, before the CPA. The other, others are not at the moment. It's highly visible. This is a space that is used by the most diverse members of our community. It's used by poor people, by families, by young families. I think, as I said in the very first meeting, our vote for this, regardless of how we felt about the proposal, would be a vote of confidence for the library and I stand by that and I'm prepared to give that vote of confidence. And I think it would be a real shame if we voted this down over procedure. It's just, I don't think that's the town that we want to live in. A town that is bogged down in process and legal issues. And I'm, I'm prepared to support vociferously the proposal. I think we could have had this debate and I maybe would, would have been persuaded, you know, three or four or five months ago when the proposals first came before us. But I think we had a conversation, we did due diligence and we discussed it and we voted on it. And I don't really wanna be in a position where we vote against it at this point. And I, I think it would be, 
a real shame if we, uh, I, I think the, no matter how we feel about it, it will be interpreted as saying the taxpayers don't support the Jones Library. And I don't think that's the political position or the outward message that we, that, that's not the message I wanna send. And I don't wanna be on a committee that sends that kind of message. I wanna be supporting uh, the, the town. I wanna to support this kind of project, this kind of renovation, full-throated. We have the backing of the town manager and I'm ready to support it. Anybody else? Sarah? You're not. You have to. Yeah, yeah, here I am. Here I am. I would just defer to Paul, though, who's raised his hand many times. Um, but that's Nate's call. Um, I just, it, speaking only to the historic preservation question, um, although I might say more broadly, I, I don't see that we have any information before us now that we didn't have on March 5th or even a couple weeks before that. Um, We've had only one legal opinion that I can, that I remember seeing, and that's from the town's attorney um, or legal counsel. And for me, that's, they represent the town and have the town's interests um, at heart, I hope. And maybe I'm oversimplifying. I'm relatively new to this committee and perhaps to the town still after eight years. But um, I'm going to I'm going to rely on their opinion, and I don't I don't I know that our process was cut off, but I feel that we're just having the same discussion tonight that we had March fifth, and I haven't heard really heard anything new yet. So that's it for now. Anybody else? Paul. Just two very quick points. One is you only have one legal opinion, as Sarah said. It's from your, your attorney, your town attorney, who may rendered that opinion. You don't have a competing legal opinion on this particular question. So you are able to act if you choose. You don't have to act. It doesn't say you have to act. It says you may act. The second point is also the CPA committee is not the final arbiter on the financing of it. That ultimately resides with the town council, the elected officials who are elected by the people. So, and that's where the, uh, the financing arguments, I think, would, should reside at the town council level, not at the CPA level. Yours is to judge if this is something that the CPA committee would like to support or not. And thank you for letting me speak. Michael, did you have your hand up? Um, yes, I did. Um, I have a question for uh, Mr. Bockelman. Uh, is, are you suggesting that whether or not the CPA uh, approves or disapproves this project, the town council can extract $1 million from CPA funds, whether or not we approve it? No, it cannot. On the arbiter? No, it cannot. But, but my point was that you have to act and the council has to act as well. If you don't act, the council cannot act. Okay, so you, okay. would, you would truncate the process here. I fine. I want to make sure that was the case, and I, I'm glad glad to know that. Um, the second point I wanted, to, well, the first point I wanted to make <laughs> prior to uh, Mr. Bockelman's uh, suggestion a minute ago uh, was to uh, respond to what Sarah said. We we've, we've not heard anything new. Uh, I think we have heard something new, and that that something new has come from uh, the historical commission and the suggestion that a new application from the library for specifics would be welcome. And I would welcome that. And if she would like to make that motion or a motion that would uh, uh, speak to that question, uh, I would be very happy to support that. Uh, I think that's a compromise. Uh, and since the issue of funding the library at this point seems not to be a, a time sensitive, terribly time sensitive the way it was before, um, I think that might be a way to get out of this issue and to really get uh, good support from the town relative to a proposal that would speak to specific issues relative to historic preservation. Anybody else? Diana? I, I have a very minor point, but I would like to ask Paul this question. The town lawyer's letter does not mention 
anything about what she investigated from the Department of Revenue, which is supposed to be the ultimate arbiter. And I found that a little surprising. I believe there's a one-line mention of DOR, but not anything she found out from their posted guidelines or trying to reach the Commissioner of Revenue. It's, it's a very minor point, but I would like to bring it out because just saying it's the town lawyer's letter, if it's deficient, I think we should recognize that. But I appreciate what Michael said, um, and I really do wish we could just put this aside for a later application that CPA would totally be for, uh, the Department of Revenue would be for things that are truly not building an outside wall, but containers and so forth inside to preserve to historically to preserve the historical documents that we all care so much about. Sam, did you have your hand up? I did. Uh, I've been listening to everyone. Uh, I've read the CPA plan, the CPA law, the information guidelines released that Diana referenced. Uh, every submittal twice. Uh, every report twice and everything else. Uh, <clears throat> there's a few different issues. I would say that my opinion is that there is new information from the time that we met in February and March. Uh, new information would be, aside from a commentary from the CPA coalition, we have a letter from the lawyer, uh, but we also have letters and submittals and public comments from at least 40 individuals on both sides, <clears throat> aside from our own discussion and the Historical Commission and others' comments about possibly um, seeking a, a updated proposal. We also have the information that the director of the library has contacted the uh, MBLC for and requested a one-year delay in their approval of the grant. That's my understanding from the town manager's report. Uh, <clears throat> uh, I think all of that is relevant. Um, uh, and that is separate from opinions that may or may not exist regarding the um, merits of the discrepancies that we're talking about here. Um, <clears throat> I also think that given it just like with anything, uh, it's advisable to make decisions on the best available information available at the time of that decision. I would say that we have not yet, I don't think it's an appropriate metaphor, but I don't think Iraq has been invaded yet. I think it's in the discussion planning and the latest information for all uh, is a good thing for everyone to consider. And in that regard, uh, it's clear that there are some committee members who have uh, reservations or beyond reservations about the current phraseology and references, and I think they should be allowed the capacity to register their votes with the latest information. Um, <clears throat> I, I do believe that uh, additional information as requested or referenced by Nate, Diana, Michael and Robin uh, regarding clarification of the submittal is not a negative uh, and when combined with a, uh, a likelihood of delay um, that nothing would occur between now and the next year's cycle which really isn't that far away. Uh, the only other thing I would comment in terms of what's changed is I do think that the uh, financial situation of uh, the town and the country for that matter, or the world is uncertain. And I would say that's a new piece of information that some people may wish to consider. I'm not saying if I do or not. Uh, so that's my comment about the general nature of the overall discussion. Uh, regarding questions about whether something qualifies, whether or not it's a supplanting of funds, those are more specific issues, but I think we could, enable further discussion and allow the committee members to vote uh, with the latest information according to how they uh, feel. Uh, I just want to respond to something Sarah uh, Isinger said. Um, 
uh, I don't see this at all as us getting hung up on procedure. Um, I, I think I think we have a really complicated proposal of which there is very differing opinion from two third parties, which both of which we have to take into account. And I think we're talking about a million dollars. This is a lot of money. Um, and I think that isn't procedure. It's about correctly dispersing money, fairly precious money in some ways because of the nature of the CPA that's given to us in essence to distribute. So I, 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 really, I don't see this as being procedure based um, at all. Now, some of the things that people have been talking about, we could rescind this proposal as is and invite the library to do what Michael and others are, are proposing, which is to come back with us, come back to us with a proposal and a budget for things for which there will be no mistaking its qualification and its appropriateness for a CPA grant. I would invite that as an individual member. Uh, Sarah? Yeah. Oh. Sarah Mitchell? Yeah, yeah, I just want to um, correct a misunderstanding of what I said. I was confining myself to Nate's first question, which was just can we discuss the whether it this project uh, meets the criteria for historic preservation. Um, so when I said we had no new information, that's what I was referring to. Obviously, we have lots of public comments and, and some other documents. That's Sarah, Sarah, go ahead. Hi, yeah, thank you. Um, I had asked three weeks ago or three or four weeks ago in a note to you and Anthony to see if the library could come back and present to us on their current plan. So I had, if we thought there was sort of all of these, you know, issues about the status of the project and the timing, and I had asked for that library to come back to present to our committee at the, so I don't know where that idea, why that didn't happen. I, I thought that was an appropriate next step because we're kind of talking around, we, we're not actually talking to the, direct library folks. I guess Matt Blumenfeld is on the call here. But um, that would have been helpful um, if that to get more information on the timing of the project, the revised construction budget, all of those issues that have been raised here. Well, I'm, I'm sorry that must have fallen through the cracks. But we can still get that information, right? Sarah's on mute. I mean, it's, it's not up to me, you know, I, I assume they would come and present. Um, I think so. Paul? I do note the chair of the library trustees is in the audience, just as a note to you. Okay. Uh, I'd welcome a comment from him after Robin. Let me, let's have Robin speak and then if Austin would like to speak, that would be fine. I'm just trying to clarify the, the, the difference between them uh, coming before the committee again and actually submitting a revised proposal. Well, I mean, I guess, and Paul can correct me if I have the parliamentary process wrong, I guess we could, we could reject the proposal as is, but invite another proposal that we could, that we could we could very swiftly meet on and make a decision about. Right. Or... That was, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. Go ahead. Um, that was the intention of the Historic Commission's recommendation to define the proposal within reasonable parameters. So if it's better to do it via formal return of proposal to the committee, I would, I would definitely um, support that. Return to the committee by rejecting the proposal? Uh, I'm not sure how we would. Or just sending it back and say, we, you need sending, to work. Yes, yeah, sending it back and saying, it, bring, bring it back to us. Here are the historical commission's recommendations. I have the text. Present us with a more specific proposal that fits within the guidelines uh, because it's a, an, an appropriate project and it just needs to be appropriately presented. Well, 
so where this stands now is that it's it's considered a vote because there was a vote. It's in the town council's hands. Um, they have not acted on it and they don't intend to act on it for quite some time. So you can let this ride and then come back in a different time and say, we'd like to rescind that previous one and, and use this other thing and, and use this alternative, or you can rescind now and, and then move forward uh, in the hopes that there'd be something different. But there is no time urgency for you to act tonight, I don't think. Um, because the council does not intend to take action on this till, well, until they really need to, which is at the end of the calendar year, most likely. Michael? Uh, there is a motion on the floor to rescind, period, correct? Correct. Could we add to that motion, uh, as, uh, an addition to the motion to rescind the motion, uh, to rescind the original vote and encourage uh, the library to resubmit uh, and then the, we can use the, the language that the Historical Commission uh, has developed, uh, which is, escapes me at the moment. Uh, but put those two ideas into one motion. Or do it in two. I mean, I don't see why we couldn't rescind the vote and then have a second vote to say we would invite a new proposal from, from the library. Oh. Uh, the, the chair of the library trustees has his hand raised. Does she want to invite him in? Okay, is that Austin? Yes. Austin, you're on. Austin, you're muted. Thank you, Nate. Uh, again, thank you all for the work that you've done. Um, I've been on many town committees. Um, this is a kind of procedural morass that you seem to have. I believe that what would be fair would be for you to invite the library to a meeting at which we could respond to some of what has been articulated tonight. Because much of what has been articulated tonight is, so to speak, new. It's new to us. Uh, arguments have been made that were not previously been made. References have been made to conversations among members of the CPA. Um, I wasn't at a meeting in which those comments were, were, were made. So it seems to me that um, it would maybe help the process if you gave the library a chance to actually respond, not in the way of public comment in, in, in advance of the conversation, but it invited us back to talk about some of the concerns that you have. Uh, I, don't, I don't think we've really had a fair chance to talk about those concerns because many of them are, uh, I think, new on the table, at least to me, as I've listened to uh, the conversation tonight. Thank you. Okay. Rob? I just want to stress um, what I feel is the need for a defined proposal. I think having more conversation without a defined proposal that clears up all the issues around whether it's historic preservation or not um, just create invites um, an opportunity for more confusion. So um, I'm strongly in support of asking for a revised proposal from the library and then allowing more comment and discussion. But without Without defining it in terms of the Historical Commission's recommendation, which is very specific, I think we get into too much confusion and lack of clarity. I think that's a really important point. Uh, Fletcher has been trying to talk for a while. No, it's okay. Um, I'm just, it really seems that everybody right now at the moment on the committee seems to be in, a, um, in agreement that we should rescind this and that the Library Committee comes back to us. That, that does that does that seem so no maybe I may, if not everybody i think there certainly seems to be some interest in that as a way to to effectively move this process forward just move move forward so so we could have we could have the vote on the motion on the floor we could follow that by a motion to encourage um the library with working with the historical commission to submit a proposal. Robin, hey, Sarah, do you want to uh, mute? Go ahead, Robin. 
Um, I just I prepared a motion for uh, the previous week's meeting, so just for, I just emailed it to Anthony. So I do have language ready if we need it. Okay. So do people, Michael? Uh, I think it would be wise to put the two ideas together to rescind and to invite, because I think that will create a, a, a stronger vote uh, in favor. I was going to say the same thing. I'm not comfortable with one vote and then another. I feel like they have to be together. Yeah, I agree. Um, would somebody like to volunteer some wording for that? Um, just so we have some clarity, Robin? I already had it written. <laughs> uh, okay, so the wording is uh, that the CPA committee requests a revised proposal from the applicant, the Friends of the Jones Library, which aligns with the historical commission recommendation to the C uh, CPA committee on January 30th, 2020, the text of which follows. The Amherst Historical Commission is in favor in principle of preserving the town's special collections with CPA funds targeted to HVAC, climate control and fire suppression, an appropriate document and artifact storage in an appropriately secured space up to a total of $1 million with a recommended bonding period of 10 years. That in addition to the revised proposal, the applicant submit an explanation as to why the line item budget for this project is not currently available in the timeline for when this budget can be expected. And I sent it to Anthony, so he's got the text. Robin, can I just ask you a question about that? Um, yep. Why do we give a dollar figure yeah. you know, up to a certain dollar figure? Why wouldn't we simply say, you, you understand, you know, they, you understand what the concerns are among the committee, resubmit a, an, a, an historical preservation proposal with a budget so that we know what the money is being spent for as opposed to saying, find another way to come up to a million dollars. That's a fair question. I mean, again, the, the million dollar figure, and Jane Wald isn't here to speak to this, and she has much more expertise in this regard, but the million dollar figure was um, decided upon because uh, 1.5 million seemed to maybe, um, uh, I don't know, I don't want to phrase this the wrong way, it was not an appropriate figure but that with her experience in terms of what all these systems would cost to give the committee a sense of what they would be looking at in terms of those systems, that around a million dollars would be relatively straightforward to reach a million dollars if you put all those systems in place. But the motion doesn't have to have that dollar figure. It was just put there as helpful guidance from someone with experience of uh, going through these sort of uh, installations of preservation systems to give a sense of expertise of what was a realistic amount one could expect to spend. I guess what's awkward about that to me is it sounds like it's backfilling a dollar amount, which is... Yeah, and that was not, that was definitely not the intention, and if we want to strike that language, I think that's totally fine. Again, it was really from the Historical Commission to give the CPA a sense of what realistically these kind of systems would cost. Okay, Michael? I think we need to second Robin's motion, first of all. Anybody like to second the motion? I will. Okay, seconded by Michael. Aren't we in the middle of a first vote though? Yeah, I yeah. think we're gonna add this language <laughs> to the first motion. That's this, right. And this is the substitute, an addition to the original motion is what this is. And we're voting on whether to add it to the original motion. Diana? Uh, the first thing is, I think we have to rescind the vote that was on the fl uh, made originally. And the second thing is, I think when uh, the, um, the library resubmits, they should submit a budget. That's what everybody else does. We shouldn't tell them what uh, um, kinds of things they should budget. They should decide what the most important things are and put them in their new proposal. But if we need to take that vote on rescinding, that wasn't even part of the last motion. Go ahead, Michael. Yes, it was part of the last motion. It was the last motion was in addition to rescinding. At least that's that's what I was suggesting, and I think that's what Robin intended. So the motion is to rescind and the language she just gave us. Okay. And that's a substitute motion, and that we have to vote on whether whether we accept that as a substitute to the original motion. Sam. 
seems to be a, an awfully long-winded addition to a motion from my perspective. Uh, I think we'd be better served to accomplish rescinding and then to have a simple statement that says the committee um, seeks to invite another proposal and provide without those parameters it provides the flexibility for the library to accomplish whatever they needs want to be accomplished in that proposal but the substance at hand and the decision at hand is whether or not to rescind a vote that existed in march then thereafter barn doors are open for whatever uh, would be requested it would allow and i think it's two separate motions from my my opinion robin um, if you look at the text on the screen, it's perhaps not quite, not quite as long as it sounds. The reason it sounds long is it because it includes the exact text that we developed at the Historical Commission meeting to help direct the proposal to appropriate an, an appropriate presentation. So we don't end up in the same situation that we did now, which is that they don't have enough clarity about what would be an appropriate um, ask. Michael. Uh, and I, I feel that we should keep these, these two ideas together because I think there's greater support on the committee if we combine the ideas than there would be simply for rescinding. Because I think some people on the committee might not be willing to vote to rescind without the additional but it really doesn't request. Matter. Correct. I'm one of those people. Thank you yeah, I would for saying that, Michael. Sarah Marshall. Nate. Um, that David. I, I just, I think it's, I imagine that from the library's perspective and given the, the opinion of the town's attorney, they think they've presented something that passes, you know, that qualifies. So, I mean, if, if, if their proposal is turned down, then I guess, you know, they'll decide what's their next best step. But, um, to tell them to do something that satisfies the historic preservation guidelines. I mean, I think they think they've already done that. So, David? Yes, I, I agree with what Sarah just stated. But the question I, if you're going to rescind this um, proposal, um, so you're asking the library to send you a different million dollar proposal? Well, I hope not, because I think that would be a terrible message. Um, well, that's what uh, I'm getting. Uh, there are questions being raised, and the library needs a million dollars to come to the CPA. So, we're saying we're going to reject the proposal, but send us another proposal. Uh, and we would have not said, send us the proposal with a half million dollars, and we'll seriously consider funding. It, I think they've sent us the proposal for what they need. Yeah, I, I, I think I'm with you. Uh, Robin, can I ask you a question? Is there an objection to just keeping this fairly simple and just including, we invite the library to come back to us with a budget and a list of items that they think are, I, I'm just not sure. That's, why I, I, that, that's fine. I think that, I, I think that um, somewhere in the process we got, we steered away from the historical commission trying to provide guidance to both the applicant and the CPA. And that was the purpose of the statement was to, it, it, it's not to ask the library to propose something different. It's to ask them to refine their proposal so that it fits appropriate with the guidelines, which is everyone's intention. So uh, because we have a recommendation from the historical commission, which is an important part of the process, it seems, Helpful, but you know, I, I'm I'm open I, I'm open to to making it more, le, you know, less verbiage. But I just want people to understand that the purpose is that that the part of the reason that we're in this situation is because the library did not 
clearly enough understand what could and couldn't be allowed in terms of funding for CPA. And because of where they are in their grant process, they didn't have a line item budget that we could direct them toward to say, these are the things that we could cover, you can ask for them. So that's the purpose of the specificness of the recommendation and the fact that the, the commission itself made a statement at its meeting, which I purposefully wrote down and purposefully brought to the CPA to, um, to, to provide as much clarity as possible. So that's, that's, that's a long answer, sorry. Michael? Uh, Robin, would you be willing to remove the $1 million from that uh, uh, amendment? Yeah, that's fine. That makes a big difference, I think, in terms of the signal it sends to the library. It may come back at essentially that amount anyway, but with, if we're not suggesting it, then it not, doesn't necessarily come back that way. Right, I understand your point. So, uh, Sam, did you want to say something? I still no. think we need to no. continue. I, I still think we need to accomplish the item on the agenda, which is to vote on the rescinding and then to have a second comment, whatever that might be, uh, in favor of uh, the question of submittal. That's my opinion. I think it's cleaner that way and uh, it's easiest. Anthony? Um, there's a lot of back and forth about how you're going to vote. You have a motion in front of you to amend the first motion. I might suggest someone calls that vote. That's all. Okay. So or retract it. Yeah, I mean, I think we are getting caught up in the weeds a little bit. I think we're in, there's much more agreement among all of us than than um, than one might think. I mean, I I think we seem to all be very much in support. Let me back up. We seem to be, most of us seem to be leaning toward um, either rejecting the Jones proposal because we think it ought to be rejected or rejecting it because we think we can get something better from them. So if, if we, and, and Anthony, I don't know what the procedure is, are people comfortable with just to keep it kind of simple to vote on rescinding and then voting on what we want to encourage the Jones Library to do because it doesn't seem like there's much disagreement among the committee about the substance of those things. It seems like there's some disagreement about whether we vote in one motion or two, which we could probably talk about all night. <laughs> yeah. Paul, go ahead. So there is a procedure under Robert's rules. You have a mo you put a motion on the table, Nate, to rescind. Uh, Robin put a, a either a substitute motion, as Michael said, or an amendment to your motion. And so that's what's on the table now, as Anthony said. That's what you can either vote on or not, or, or vote yes or no on. So I think um, that's how actions take place. So we, we have a motion on the floor, and we can amend that motion and then vote on the amended version of the motion? Mm -hmm. Okay. And do we have to vote for the amendment before we vote for the Sam. I think we should rescind the amendment and just vote on the first motion and then put a second motion in there. That's clear. Anthony, you said you don't have to rescind the amendment, just vote no on the amendment. Phraseology. So I call the question on voting on, on the voting to add the amendment. Is there a second? Second. So we are voting on the addition of an amendment to the original, mo no? Okay, go ahead. <laughs> Michael has called the question. This okay. is a vote to close debate. Okay. Uh, and we have a second, correct? Correct. Is there any discussion? This is a motion to end debate. Yeah, I don't believe you discuss. Uh, <laughs> you can't discuss it. Good point. Uh, since, this is a, since this is a remote meeting, uh, we'll do this as a roll call vote. Okay. What are we voting on? This is a vote to close. This is a vote to call the question on the amend on the motion to amend the motion and end debate on that. Okay. So, this is a motion to close debate. Uh, Bert Whistle. Yes. Buddington. Yes. Clark. Yes. Eisinger. Yes. Fordham. Yes. 
McLeod. Sure. <laughs> yes. <Marshall. laughs> what? Did you Marshall? call me? Yes. 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 Stein? Yes. Williams? Yes. Okay, debate is closed. So uh, we'll now move to vote on the amendment. So the amendment is, I'm going to read it one more time. <laughs> That the, so this, is, this will be added to the first motion, that the CPA committee request a revised proposal from the applicant, the Friends of the Jones Library, which aligns with the Historical Commission recommendation to the CPAC on January 30th, 2020, the text of which follows, the Amherst Historical Commission is in favor in principle of preserving the town's special collections with CPA funds targeted to HVAC, climate control, and fire suppression, and appropriate document and artifact storage in an appropriately, in an appropriately secured space that in addition to the revised proposal, the applicant submit an explanation as to why a line item budget for this project is not currently available and a timeline for when this budget can be expected. This is a vote on this amendment to the motion. Okay, Bert Whistle. Yes. Buddington. Yes. Clark. Yes. Isinger. She may have yes, yes. No, I'm right here and I'm, I'm leaving in about two minutes. Okay. How's, what's your vote, Sarah? I said yes. Fordham? Yes. McLeod? No. Marshall? No. Stein? Yes. Williams? Yes. Okay, the vote is seven to two in favor, so the motion is amended. Well, the question on the motion. Second. Okay, a vote to call the question on the first motion. This will end debate. Uh, Bert Whistle. Yes. Buddington. Yes. Clark. Yes. Isinger. Yes. Fordham. Yes. McLeod. Uh, yes. Marshall. Yes. Stein. Yes. Williams. Yes. Okay, so. This is a motion to, I wrote this down. <laughs> I wanna get the exact text. So this is a motion to rescind the recommendation of the Jones Library Project and to append uh, the text that I just read to you a moment ago. To that Can you read it again? <laughs> I'm serious. This is the motion to rescind the recommendation for the Jones Library project and that the CPA committee request a revised proposal from the applicant, the Friends of the Jones Library, which aligns with the Historical Commission recommendation to the CPAC on January 30th, 2020, the text of which follows. The Amherst Historical Commission is in favor in principle of preserving the town's special collections with CPA funds targeted to HVAC, climate control, and fire suppression an appropriate document and artifact storage in an appropriately secured space. And that in addition to the revised proposal, the applicant submit an explanation as to why a line item budget for this project is not currently available and a timeline for when this budget can be expected. Okay, so this is a vote on what I just read, Buddington, uh, Bert Whistle, sorry. Yes. Buddington. Yes. Clark. Yes. Isinger. I'm sorry, I, someone other, I'll vote in a moment. Hold on. Can you keep going? Fordham. Yeah. Yes. McLeod. I'll vote in a moment. What? Marshall. No. Stein. Yes. Williams. Yes. Isinger. I mean, yes. I have your hand. McLeod. I think your chair's over there, but I can sit over there if you want. Sam, your vote? Yeah, I'm contemplating it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll say yes. The vote is eight to one. Thank you, Anthony, for your um, efficiency guidance. Thank you, Paul, for your Robert's Rules of Order guidance. Um, so we can move on. Right. Mr. Chairman, I, I just want to let you know I have to leave right now. I'm sorry. I'm over time. Uh, thank uh, you for hanging in there with us. Thanks. Sarah. Thanks a lot, everybody. Bye. Bye, Sarah. Um, I would 
uh, recommend that maybe we, um, well, okay, so the CPA plan. Um, I think, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, I think the one issue in the CPA plan is the, the language, submitting the language um, <laughs> to give us some flexibility to ask for money back, unspent money back after three years. I, am I wrong in that? Are there other outstanding issues with the plan? Okay. So, um, maybe that's something that we can make some suggestions for and bring and we're, we're probably going to meet again given what we just did and we can include a fairly simple review and vote about that language as inserted into this document is that is that okay with people that's Diana? that's fine i think asking for the money back in uh to come back into the town car first if it hasn't been spent in three years is a good idea. The only question I had is, might there be an appeals process to right. either Paul or Sonia or somebody outside of the committee if there were some catas catastrophe, let's say, that led to this delay in spending? I would like some appeals process possibly added. So I just mentioned that. I don't know the right way to do it. Sonia has it. Well, maybe if, if anybody would like to contribute some possible language to that and bring it to the, our next meeting, um, I don't think it's very complicated, um, but I, I think, Diana, you're right. That's a, the, the appeals process seems pretty critical to that. Um, why don't we do that? If anybody wants to chime in on that with some alternate, with some language, and hopefully we can make a decision in our next meeting and finalize the plan. Um, I will talk to Sarah. I mean, it relates somewhat to the reporting process in terms of being able to ask for an extension. So um, I'll try to talk to her and see if we can pull something together. Excellent. Okay, that's great. Um, is the report is there a report from the outreach task force, Sam? That would be you, right? Uh, that would be me. <laughs> uh, we held off post March meeting with the onset of all the issues that affected the world. We agreed to meet again in July, where we will generate a list of uh, projects for which we would like to have signage made. Uh, my understanding from Sonia's email is that Paul has agreed in concept to authorizing town staff to generate signs, signage, and the process needs to be determined. Uh, in terms of how we would make that ask and Sonia and Paul and others would return a comment to us in terms of how we would approach that. But in essence, uh, the subcommittee will try to come up with a prioritized listing for signs separate from this. Uh, we also have a, an email and a request in to set up a Facebook page for the CPAC committee, uh, we believe that it would be worthwhile to highlight some of the benefits and the nice projects that are out there. Uh, and we're, I emailed uh, Brianna Paul, uh, and Paul, uh, excuse me, Nate had contacted her previously. There was positive response and that the question that related to it was how it would be overseen administratively to make sure that it, uh, functions smoothly and so we're certainly amenable to whatever methods the town uh, deems appropriate but we'd like to be able to start as soon as we could with the intent to have positive engagement with the community with the idea of increasing the potential submittals of projects beyond the usual players we think that the community does a lot of good things and we'd like to see more proposals from all reaches and anything we can do in a positive way to outreach would be helpful. So whatever uh, feedback we get from uh, Brianna and the town would be great on Facebook and we have some other issues that we'll start up again uh, on the checklist to do in July, but I don't anticipate that we'll be going to any district meetings as of yet to uh, discuss what we're doing. We'll see how that plays out. Thank you, Sam. Anthony, did you have something to say? Yeah, I just wanted to note on the Facebook thing. Um, CPAC actually has a Facebook page already. Uh, if any of our veterans know who controls it, that would be great <laughs> info. Oh, that's news uh, to me. 
Yeah, I have I have contacted the anonymous owner of the page and not received a response. It's not active. Nobody's used it since 2017. Um, and it's not associated with any town email addresses. So I'm guessing a former chair, but nobody in town hall seems to know who's running it or who, if anyone. And so thus, anyone? we all agree and concur with Paul and Sonia and Brianna's yeah. <laughs> request that it be managed properly. Right. So if anyone has an inkling on who already owns it, that just, it'll save us a, the setup. We could just resume. But if nobody knows, then we'll just ignore it and start it. It'll rain in that rogue Facebook page somehow. Yeah. Sarah? Uh, yeah, I, I, I wonder, it must be possible, but I don't know how difficult it would be to get Facebook to take that down if it's representing itself as a government page and in fact, if effectively it's not. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. I mean, it's, it, I mean it, it, it's a couple years out of date, but clearly it was maintained by someone who worked with the committee. Like it's, it's linking to our proposals, it's written professionally, it's using photographs. So okay. some, somebody did this legit at one point, and I'm guessing a former chair who's just. Oh. So, so we do wind up with these rogue pages that individual set up, not, and it, in terms of maintaining um, sort of consistency and liability issues for any kind of uh, social media pages for the town, because you are a town committee, um, we do run them all through our communications manager, who is Brianna, and we s make sure we sort everything so that everybody's working on the same platform. It's being managed. The IT department has the ability to change things if things get up there. So um, just be patient on how that works its way out, wicks through. Thanks. Robin, did you um, want to talk any more about the reporting task force? I do not have anything to report at this point. Okay. Um, I have no topics that the chair didn't anticipate, but anybody else? Sarah? I, I wonder if um, since town council uh, approved our recommendations for the cash grants, is the reporting, is that ready to kick in as a, as a requirement for these um, organizations that have successfully uh, been granted money? You mean whatever Robin's group comes up with for reporting? Yeah, I mean, the sooner the better. At, you know, tomorrow is July 1st, <laughs> the new fiscal year. So I would great. think whatever, whatever Robin and her group come up with would be um, ineffective immediately, I would assume. I, I will uh, get back to, in touch with Sarah Eisinger and, and um, I'll report back. We haven't touched base since the last um, time we reported. Okay, that's great. Anything, anybody else? So I guess we will be hearing from the library at some point and be reconvening. Uh, it won't be with me. I'll be leaving the committee uh, probably tomorrow because um, I'm moving. Uh, so I'll, I'll, Paul, I'll send you the official email about that tomorrow if you, ne if you need that. Um, so I guess our work is done. Thanks for, uh, I know this has been long and laborious and kind of exhausting. Uh, thanks for everybody being so thoughtful and civil in doing this the way that I think people in town should be proud of. I think we really worked well on this issue, even though it was a long slog. So thanks for doing that. And thank you, Nate, for your leadership. Thank you, Nate, very thank much. Thank you, Nate. It's you. phenomenal. You guys are a great group. Where are you going? Yeah. Williamstown. Oh. Oh. Really? <laughs> you can visit. It's a long story. Okay. So you're going to it now. Switching um, colors, yeah. eh? Uh, who will be taking So who is uh, who's the vice chair again? I know we voted on that. I, Sarah yeah. Marshall, I believe. Sarah, okay, got it. In the next meeting, you'll probably have to elect officers. Um, yeah. So, so I'll Sarah. convene that. I convene that. I, I guess so. Yeah. Well, uh, Sarah, let's you and I talk about uh, setting up a doodle poll or something and figure out what our next meeting is. We'll need to give the library time to <clears throat> respond right. and figure out and, what our schedule is. And, and so we will have a vacant at large seat. So I forget that that used how that used to be determined. Paul, is that something you can decide now? Okay. Um, do we have a motion to adjourn? So moved that we, I second it. Uh, any discussion, all in favor?
Bye. 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 Thanks, everybody. We are Thank here. you. Goodbye. Thanks, Bye. Nate. Bye. Thanks, Nate. <laughs> we'll Thanks Anthony. Nate. We'll miss Bye. you, Nate. Thanks, Nate. See you, Anthony. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Thanks, Anthony. Thank you. You're welcome. Very much appreciate it. Oh, you guys are good.